What a beauty! G'day and welcome to the Jock Reynolds Supercoach Podcast. I am Lek Dog, and it's a very special podcast because it's not just the Jock Reynolds Supercoach Podcast, it's also the mailbag and everybody's here from the jr.com.au podcasts. Damo, Patch and Clarky are all on board. Gentlemen, Damo, first of all, how are you? I'm all right. I wish my Supercoach team wasn't a burning fire of despair but i'm fine clarky you beautiful man how are you uh I, I yeah good i got to see live football uh and that was bad and then good and then my super coach team is fine yeah nice happy for you and patch how are you shut the hell up like dog you worm <laughs> <laughs> we're recording an hour after the god forsaken game finished <laughs> and I cannot, I can't even, I, he's just, he's right there. The ball's spinning on his finger. Won't somebody deck Nick Dacos, for God's sake. Ugh. And we we haven't had lockout lift so, yet, so I can't uh, raid tread all of my bad players who are bad. <laughs> Ugh, I'm, shut the hell up. Get out of here. Get off my lawn, kid. A bit of a different podcast today, as we just mute Patch's mic for a second. Going to go through just like the top line news. Lockout hasn't lifted yet, so we'll just cover off on some of the rookies that are going to be on the bubble. In terms of upgrades and stuff, there's going to be plenty of content on the website this week. There'll be a cheat sheet. There'll be a a bunch of stuff. So for for upgrades, you can start to look at basically whoever you want. And then we're going to go into questions, gentlemen. And this is the first time we're doing this, and we may have to do this quite a few times throughout the year because, Patch, you're going to be in a different country and a different time zone. So that's going to make recording a podcast very difficult. Lots of different countries and lots of different time zones, all of which hopefully have blocked access to KO, so I can't watch Essendon let me down <laughs> yet again. Haven't you gone on the record to say the world should just be one big time zone because you don't like the changing of time? Time shouldn't exist as a concept. On, I will okay, not, be, very interesting. I'll not anyway, be taking questions. It's a very exciting pod. I'm really excited to do some mailbag questions with the amazing Clark and Damo. First things first, I'm just going to touch off quickly at the end of this. You guys just, if there, any of these are must-buy rookies, we'll do that. But the rookies who are going to be on the bubble this week, Xavier O'Halloran at 202K, midfielder GWS scored 103 on the weekend. Seamus Mitchell, defence forward for Hawthorne, 123k, scored 79 on the weekend. Corey Wagner, 64, defence mid, Frio, 117k, will be on the bubble. Sam Sturt, forward, Fremantle, 123k, I guess 124k technically, 62 will be on the bubble. Ned Long, 51 on the weekend, 67 last week, 165k for Hawthorne will be on the bubble. And then Aaron Cadman, who has scored 31 and 36 at 207,000, will be on the bubble. And I think, oh, and of course, the one and the only, the the man, Will Gould, who came on as sub and scored 25 points, will be on the subble. Uh, he'll also be on the bubble. But he'll be on the subble. I think they're the main players. Bailey Laurie as well, will, who scored four points, will be on the subble. So they're your downgrade options this week. My advice, as always, is don't go early on guys. I'm talking about your chin cotters, etc. Don't go early on them. Gentlemen, out of those, who are the must-have players? Damo, you can go first. I think Seamus Mitchell is the top is is the top option for the for the week. I don't I don't know about the job security of Xavier Halloran. He's also a bit expensive. Um, Corey Wagner, Sam Sturt. I don't know what Fremantle are going to do with team selection. They clearly aren't working the way they're supposed to be. So. However, that fixes itself. I don't really want to pin my hopes on uh, on rookies there, especially players that aren't embedded in the twenty two. Um, Chapman and Switkowski are also due back this weekend as well. So I think Seamus Mitchell is the main one. I also don't mind Ned Long, but I'm not sure if he is in that um, Hawthorne 
set up for real or not. Yeah, and they've got some players to return. Clarky, any additional thoughts there? No, no, it's 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 kind of a bad week for picking guys that we want to go long term. So maybe it's an upgrade week instead to pick up some of the guys that are cheap and coming back from say suspension. Yes, very good, very good. And Patch, is there any other super coach news in the world we need to be aware of before delving into the uh, question? There was a few injuries over the weekend. A uh, very, very popular trade combination of Matt Roberts and Took Miller of the one up, one down trade situation. Both got injured on the weekend with Roberts doing a nasty knee and Took doing a leg of some description that is it's no longer legging properly and he needs to be, well, both of them need to be traded out which is mighty annoying if people bought, took in, and then a lot, some people captained him, and he scored 30-odd. So you'll need to find replacements for them. You've just listed a bunch of rookies. People are smart enough to know what premiums are and how much cash they'll have with which to spend the you know the, the carcass of Took Miller that they can flog off on the open market. Patch, you mentioned Took and Roberts, and I'm going to take this one second just to brag. I was drunk on the weekend, and that, I made some changes to my trades. You were drunk on the weekend? <laughs> it will, yes, I was drunk on the weekend. <laughs> I, was I had the VC on Bontempelli, but to, I still don't have a loophole player in my team. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I originally was going to trade in Roberts and Took and go with Oliver as captain, but Drunk Alexi had different plans. I said, you know what? We want this 182. So I traded in Will Day and captained him. I had Bontempelli. I kept King on the bench, and as a result, I also bought in Jack Sinclair. Anyway. My drunken antics netted me uh, 196 points and no Took Miller and no Matty Roberts. So I'm very happy right now. I'm trying to be humble. Ben King finally did the thing as well. Like I'm just very excited that for once, for once I made a decision that worked. And unfortunately, it required me to not be able to think straight to do it. So I don't know what that says about my usual function. Ringing self. endorsement I mean- for alcoholism, everyone. Um yeah, uh, just a question. Uh, you're two for two currently for drunk decision making. Is yes, that, is that my recollection for the Max Gorn round one? Yes, was the last yes. time. It's a good. It's a good question. I probably am drinking a little too much, but yes, Max yeah, Gorn was I also mean, a drunken decision. Like first, first of all, we're here for you. But second of all, <laughs> at least it's working out. I guess high functioning. No, I'm very. I'm a high functioning uh, social drinker. No, anyway, I just wanted to get that on the record that I finally did something correct. Damo, you can run the show now. Oh, okay. Uh, do I do the mailbag intro here? Should, should I do the mailbag intro? I guess. I this is good because I think the last time we did a Megapod, it was like a 50-50, but this time we definitely made you guys come to us. Yeah, I like it. The less I have to do, the more I endorse that product. All right. Well, I guess, uh, I guess I'll do a mailbag intro. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mailbag portion of this podcast where we answer your questions to help you with your team this 2023 season. Let's get to the questions. Yay. Are you going to introduce your esteemed guests this week on the podcast? <laughs> They've already been introduced. It's fine. We know who I was we are. just still in the room from the last podcast, so. <laughs> so, Harry wants to know, in what order would you trade out Wilmot, McKenna, Philippu, Cowan and Davy. Yes. Can you read those names to me again, please? Wilmot, McKenna, Philippu, Cowan, and Davy. Philippu, Cowan, and Davy. Uh, I've got a feel like Davy might get rested this week. Um, not Davy. Cowan might get rested this week. Uh, I think the one that's going to struggle to hit their break even most without knowing what their break evens is, is going to be Darcy Wilmot. So for that reason, I'm going to have him at number one, then Cowan, and then don't worry about the rest. If Davy plays, he should probably be number one because I think he's got a 44 uh, in the game that just happened uh, an hour, a mere hour and a half ago. Uh, and his break even, I believe at the time was... Zero. Uh, yeah, zero. So I think if he's going to be scoring that low... And there seems to still be struggling to get into it. He might be one to just sort of go. At least Wilmot kind of has a consistent role uh, with the Lions. So I think he could probably still maintain 50s for like another week. 
possibly. Yeah, I mean, you could mount the argument, though, that Davy has less cash to lose. So, therefore, you know, if you, you hold on for him for a week, he only needs 180, one kind of out-of-the-box game, like a, you know, Fergus Green's done for a few weeks. Um, and suddenly his price generation goes back up and McKenna's got, um, McKenna and Wilmot have a bit more to lose. Um, but you can mount the argument that Wilmot could also come out and ton up. So, I, I don't know. It, I suppose it depends on which rookies on the bubble or the subble that you trust and who you feel comfortable bringing in. Like, I kind of like the look of Seamus Mitchell and the, the cut of his jib. So that, you know, predisposes you to, to downgrading, well, defensive or forward rookies, but it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's, it's the horses for courses. I, without knowing the break evens, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no faith in Fremantle at the moment, so I'm not sure I would trade Brisbane considering they come up against them next week. Mm. So I I actually think I would trade out Philippu before any of these other four guys. Just Davies got more money to make. Wilmot and McKenna could restart their cash generation, getting up a team that is pretty poor defensively at the moment, which I never thought I would say about Fremantle considering they've been one of the best defenses the last two or three years. But I think Philippu is slowly tiring and might, be leaning, be leading towards a rest at some point. Like you said, Cowan might be similar there, Lechdog. But I think Davy still has money to make. So I would actually trade out Philippu and Cowan first, and then the other three guys can sort of wait. Even Wilmot and McKenna can have one more week before they go. Philippu and Davy, I think, are big sub-risks as well, just for the, the nature of players that they are, where they're high mm. impact, high octane. I, I don't know, just a vibe. Yeah, I've, now that I've re-looked at the numbers, I think Philip, I'm with you, Damo Philip, who number one trade-out option. I think his break-even is going to be higher than his average. Uh, Looking at, at Bryce Bryce Mitchell on Twitter, uh, who everyone in the Supercoach Twitter community knows, uh, he is predicting that Philip, who will have a round seven break-even of 46. And the other guy, Will Phillips, that wasn't mentioned is probably pretty close to being traded out as well after a 36 on the weekend. So uh, they, we're going to have quite a few. It's a real worry, the rookies. It's a real Luke worry. Luke Pedler, if you've got him as well, um, potentially on the way out as well. Uh, Matty Roberts, you've got to trade. It's no bueno. It's no bueno, folks. Lucky Cowan as well with a 45 break even. Mate, Harry so, Sheasel is going to be an interesting one too. Anyway, I think they, you they hold weren't Sheasel. in the question. Not not related to the question, but I think you do hold Sheasel. Like getting worn like a glove in a game where North Melbourne were what we all think they are. And like, dog, we're butting heads on this. I don't think Aaron Hall affected Aaron Sh- Harry Sheasel at all. I think Nick <sighs> Holman affected Harry Sheasel. Damo, look, just because you watched the game and you're basing your evidence on facts and stuff, shut up. I didn't watch the game and I'm telling you it's Aaron Hall. (laughs) Clarky. (laughs) Nick Holman, I knew it was him, even when it was Aaron Hall. (laughs) Clarky. Dees won't tag Harry Sheasel, will they? Nah. I look. I, James Harms isn't even currently playing in the best twenty-two. So, who do we really send to him? Like, maybe he has a bit of a run with, but also, you know, I think any it's going to be a real treat for North Melbourne defenders because Melbourne's game plan at the moment, which I got to see in person last night, was basically kick it to a contest where we're outnumbered and then let the defender mark it. So, could be a good week for him, but I don't think he'd be necessarily a tag target i'd love to know what role he had in the last quarter because he scored 30 points doing whatever he was doing so i don't think where i don't think i think as long as he returns to either his halfback role or whatever role he had in that last quarter he should be fine so i'm not trading him out after one bad week but that might mean that his break even comes up to haunt him in a a couple weeks time Mm. we'll move on to the next question this one comes from sebo what was in the wind this weekend that made almost all of the on-field and most of the off-field rookies shit to the bed this week? Ooh, Patch, you know this one. Do I? I don't know. I'm just trying to give you a... Throw your oh. mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, i got a bone to pick with all of the bad rookies I've got on the field, yeah. that's for sure. Um, that's it. They just... They st- they stink. They they stink. Yes, Mr. Patch, it stinks. Everything stinks. I don't know. They're, they're rookies. They'll do that. They'll, they'll do that to you. Um, 
you just I, I don't know i don't know i mean a lot of people were hit by johnson being looped and being like oh 35 we're not going to take that and then three on field rookie scoring less than him but anyway i i don't know it it just it just yeah. do be like that sometime <laughs> this is what rookies score by the way we've yeah. been gifted in spoiled we've been spoiled in recent years by rookies coming in and being professional players this is what real super coach is, baby. This is what rookies score. You want Nick Dacos every year? Boring. Get out of here. Yeah. You think a Harry Sheasel can last forever and his candle burns so bright? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why the art of picking the right rookies, the rookie roulette, is, is, is well, I'm ne- one I've never perfected, but it's what makes the game fun. Fun. Also, the fact Quotation of... marks. We're basically just taking somewhat educated guesses on a sport that is based in real life and has absolutely no bearing on logic. Whoa, 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 whoa. slow down, Egghead. Educated guesses. (laughs) Whoa, all right. Not all of us went to Yale, buster. (laughs) My degree from Silly Goose University (laughs) begs to differ. So Uh, I don't think we can answer. I think it's just bad luck. Yeah, all right. Um, DR, who we've had on the mailbag previously, um, he's got a lovely YouTube channel, which he's uploading videos to every single week with great content like his um, Market Watch and all those things. Real he, educated guesses. He wants to know, would you prioritize trading in a 530K James Sicily or a 454K Will Day? Will Day. Will Day. As someone who is a Will Day oh, owner. shut uh, up. Get out of here. Get out. So Will, Will Day, even before I did my drunken loopholing stuff, was my number one target for this week. I also think that James Warple, while he has scored two back-to-back hundreds or a 99 and a 100 or whatever it was, he will probably suffer a bit from Will Day. So if you're still an owner of Warple, just be careful of that. He's, I'm not saying trade him, but just be careful of that. Sicily is awesome. Will Day gives you, what, an extra 100K or an extra 60, 70K? And I think for that reason, he's the pick. I agree. Who are the top options to swap Took for this week? Um, that comes from Kotze. Sam Walsh. Ooh, I like Sam Walsh. Me Why too. do you think Sam Walsh? He has come back and even in, I hate to say it, like a a poor Carlton performance uh, on the weekend was just racking it up and looked unhampered. So I'm really, I'd be really happy to just sort of bring him in and go, yep, that's the Sam Walsh that I would have paid for at the start of the season if he was healthy. Yep. Yep. I, I agree. He was someone I wanted to pick at the start of the year. Obviously we couldn't. He's very good. Cripps is also another one to have a look at. He's 573K. Um, so he's going to be one that people can potentially have a look at as well. Do we know? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that either. Do we know roughly how much Took is going to cost? I can tell you now because Lockout has just lifted. Hey. Hey. Live, baby, or pre recorded if you're listening to this. Uh, Took right. Miller currently costs 592,600. With a loss of thirty one thousand k, go thirty one thousand. Basically, get anyone you want. Basically, yeah. yeah, with a little bit of investment. Um, Jaden Short is back, and he's had a good game. Yeah, he's five five hundred and forty. We're all just scrambling yeah. still, aren't we? Um, I, yeah, I, think, I quite it's... like Caleb Sarong still. He's still, you know, he's now five ninety four. Yeah. So if you've got two k in the bank, one thirty on the weekend. Uh, five round average of 125.6 is the eighth best player in Supercoach at the moment. Um, that's good. good yeah, uh, that's that's quite good. Uh, Darcy Parrish uh, is another one very high on my list that I want to get into my yep. team. 555k, 110 yep. today. Gentlemen, Tim Kelly, as an aside, if you don't have a lot of cash, if you're trying to upgrade somewhere else, 544k, averaging 100 and. 11, 104 for the year, 111 over his last three. Um, he's kind of the only midfielder they've got and is pumping out a few decent scores. Is that 
Is that a good good pod city or is that just a, a flash in the pan? Uh, it's not one I'd be willing to take the risk on. Someone messaged me a little while ago. I think it was even after the sec- his second game when he was 476k and said, should I jump on? I sort of said, ah, oh, I reckon there's probably safer options. 121, 97, 139, 90, 106, uh, and 72, first game of the year. Uh, I feel like that's a pod for pod's sake. I just, I, I don't know how it can be sustainable. And to be honest with you, the up and downiness of the scoring concerns me a little bit. That's fair. What about your boy Paddy Dangerfield patch? I, he's he'll get rested. He's old. He's good at football, no denying that. Um, but I don't know. Geelong have had some very easy games, and he's always been. I'm not going to say downhill scare. He's been very very good at football for a long time, but he does love beating up on sides that are down on their luck. And they've had a, a point differential of plus 222 points in the last three games. So that's it'll continue this week against Essendon, where they'll have a point differential against us by, of 222 points. But beyond that, hmm. uh, I'm, I wouldn't be expecting him to keep that up. Tom Lipitore is also quietly achieving very, very well. Yeah. Is he a danger five... of missing of the concussion? Yes, I can't remember is, if he got a head knock or not. Did he? he miss. I did not watch that game. Anyway. All right, it's, moving it's on next shout. week then. I like that shout. Yeah, I like it. And I just want to shout out, by the way, uh, Stephen Ganigliog, his back baby, and uh, Jack Sinclair, also other options if you've got some swing ability. Anyway. And then the next question and last question from Jared Potter is, do we keep or bugger off dud rookies? We can't bugger them all off, but I think he's referring to players that aren't playing, if I remember that tweet. So your Charlie Constables and stuff, you should be fixing zeros, absolutely. You, you should be getting them out of your team. And there is something to be said for taking a hit for a week or two on cash gen from rookies if you think they're going to bounce back, a la a, um, a, a, Gin, a Ginby, Jinby from West Coast who still pumped out a decent score on the weekend even though he lost cash. So there is sometimes you want to hold rookies, but yeah, definitely get zeros out of your team. Unless you're you and you're bringing in a zero. Unless you're at the rare instance where you're trading in a $450,000 donut. Unless you've done complicated inebriation maths. To cl- to be clear, that was because I didn't want to trade in someone who wouldn't play like in the rest of the season. So I wanted to bring in a zero that would be playing. And it and hopefully he's playing. If he, do- if he doesn't get named this week, I'll be in some trouble. You'll be in some trouble. <laughs> Well, why I ought to. <laughs> oh, gum. I'm very excited to bring in Will Day, Zach Merritt, and Tom Green to my side. Hopefully that means I will score more than three points this week. I think it's, yeah, it's with the current rookies, we've already sort of gone through who's on the bubble and who we should be bringing out. We've discussed the Wilmots, the McKennas, the Cowans. Um, we're not advocating going early on Sincotta. Leck, is that correct? As no, the, Car- the Carlton man. I think he sh- he should play a few games, but I definitely don't go early on him. Very good, because Lucky Cowan is getting a little bit stinky. <laughs> yes, Lucky Cowan is playing a he- he's learning by playing a sort more Lucky down role, which isn't his actual game. But uh, we with Carlton, and we don't play our rookies where they should be played. Play anyone, so I think where yeah, they should be played. <laughs> That's true. Matthew Getting- Kennedy behind the ball, awesome, love that. Makes sense. It makes sense. Just think about it. Have you not thought about it? Mm. Mm. But yeah, as you said, fixing zeros is fine. But as far as getting rid of some of these rookies now, who, unless it's a ridiculously, I think Will Phillips is probably, if you have him, he would be the trade. Like, get rid of him. Um, as we've said, Davey probably has more money to make. Will Mott is a prime candidate but could do anything i think damo you have said to me before as well mckenna could probably has like a 70 or an 80 in him in the right game which could be this week unfortunately for you yeah tim english by the way uh has had the best start to super coach ever and he has a break in i've never seen this he has a break even 123 and super coach is predicting a 100 percent chance of, of getting that that is crazy <laughs> He has not had a score below 130 yet, 
and he was below 130 in that Frio game this week. Um, I remember seeing the score at the end of the game, and then thanks to scaling, made it to 131. He was on 129. That's awesome. I'm glad that I don't have him or Sean Darcy, and I have Riley O'Brien and uh, whatever that spud from Rowan Marshall. We, That's awesome. As a kind of question to throw in without notice, aside from the one that was ignored that I'd sent in to be answered on the mailbag, um, what do we do with your your Rowan Marshalls, your, your Errol Gouldens, your guys that just aren't quite up to scratch, but also you can't really get rid of them, like, say hypothetically if somebody had traded him Tom Hawkins like an idiot and then had buyer's remorse, hypothetically, what would that person hypothetically do if they've got like a, a like a substandard premium they hypothetically might not want anymore? Hypothetically. I mean, what can you do? That, that's the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. What, what can you do? You're all smarter well, than I am. Your options are you can get up or you can stay in bed. Um, that's as with every two decisions is what I don't know with Tom Hawkins, like he, he could just as top in your particular situation, patch, um, I'm all your yeah, friends. Thank, thank situation. you. My friend situation. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. You're in your friend's situation. Yes. You probably just have to stick it out with Hawkins because he is also a man who could easily just score a hundred points against the right opposition and kick six goals. Um, I think of missing Jaden Laverty, perhaps. It depends on the reasoning behind him as well. Like we spoke briefly about Earl Golden um, before recording and, you know, he was doing fine previously because his center bounce attendances were up and he was getting all the right things that he needed to succeed. Uh, I think a 47 against Geelong is bad, but he did have multiple frees against, was not attending center bounces and Sydney just didn't have any of the ball to actually score points with. So you probably hold an Errol Goulden, I think, for one week and see how they go against G- GWS. Um, but I mean, if not, it's a prime time as well to just jump out to Stephen Kniglyog at four ninety nine. I think he's still just under five hundred. So for thirty thousand dollars, you can go up to a Stephen Kniglyog. Always close out the mailbag discussing the vice captaincy and captaincy options for the round ahead. Who are we likely to stick the uh, to stick the armband on these this weekend, guys? Nick, Nick okay. Dacos. Well, yeah. <laughs> Nick Dacos against Adelaide is a good captaincy option. I don't mind Tim Taranto against the Suns as like a fullback option. He's been pretty reliable, scoring above one hundred and ten or around that sort of mark. Um, I would probably put the VC on Neil or Dunkley against Freo because they just give points to midfielders for fun. Um, Bontempelli against the Hawks, Oliver against North Melbourne are two other options. Patrick Cripps or Sam Walsh, if you're going to trade him in, or if you already have him, I don't know, against the Eagles is another one. Um, Sorry, I, just, just on, just on my, my throwaway Nick Dacos comment, he is projected to score 166 points this week. That's his projection of what he's supposed to be yeah. this week at the Adelaide Oval. Average is 145 at Adelaide Oval. Don't know how much he's played there, but that's his average. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Jack McRae is an option again. Yeah. Average is 106 against Hawthorne, 107 at Marvel. Bont doesn't technically pass my uh, vice-captaincy rules, but he did score 182 last week. Do we say English? Because... I don't know if we've mentioned it, but English scores over 130 all the time, apparently, for effort. And he's against Ned Reeves. Uh, Ned Reeves has been good the last few weeks, actually. He, he yeah, right. The other week. He was on 50 at halftime last Great week. Great for my draft team. Mm. Um, Rory Laird and Jordan Dawson against Collingwood are two other options as well, but Collingwood do shut down midfields if they get on a roll, so I don't know how viable those guys are. Anyone else? You guys want to throw into the mix? No, I think your call on Lockie Neal's a really good one. I think he's he's a, a prime candidate. So, yeah. All right. Well, that closes the Jock Mailbag portion of this podcast. Hashtag Jock Mailbag to get your question on the next one or send an email to jockmailbag at gmail.com.
Fantastic. Very good stuff, gentlemen. Is there any other topics we want to cover before we wrap this up? It's a bit of a shorter pod, but I think we're all worn out from a very long weekend. Mm. I'd, I'd, There's a lot of football. I'd like to know. I mean, similar to the um, the Golden situation, but Will Setterfield is in a, a bunch of teams um, and hasn't quite lived up to the, the hype from the first two rounds. Do we look to trade him out? Because um, he's probably not a keeper at this stage. At what stage do we trade him out? Do we keep him till... The last upgrade. Well, I just want to get your thoughts quickly, each of you. Damo, what do you reckon? As an owner, I'm actually looking to move him on to someone who's a more reliable point scorer. I don't know who that might become. That might be a Canelio. That might be some. There might be someone in defence. If I can get my dual position swings going in the right direction, but he's he's not someone I want to keep, and I probably will play around with moving him on, but. I also wouldn't be too upset if I had to keep him through other moves as well. He's he's made a hundred k, so he's kind of done his job as and that scored as decent points. He's, he's he's kind of done his job as a mid pricer. It's just a matter of how how long until he's moved on, and if you can move him to a to a top line mid or someone who's going to score more reliably, then I think you do it. I'm just looking through the the play the most owned players. There's a couple of alarming break evens that jump out. Uh, Harry Shees will break even 99. Obviously, in every game except one, he's scored that, so that's not that alarming. But the break even of 88 for Will Setterfield's a worry. Jason Horn Francis is still in a third of teams. Night break even 99, uh, which is a worry. He hasn't been performing that well. And then like. Luke Davies, Udiak, break even of 160. Obviously, you're not going to move him. But there's a few guys that I'm just I'm a little worried about. I'm a little worried about. Cam McKenzie, break even 79 and lost 18 grand on the weekend. There are definitely some... I think we can pretty much move on from any of these sort of non-keepers. Yeah, Golden has a 135 as well. So if you brought it, if you had him as a stepping stone, um, if that was your purpose for having him, this is this is it. Um, one to keep an eye out for as well with the new Sam Taylor has gone down with long-term hamstring injury. Um, Harry Himmelberg, Clarky, he could be back. Your boy, your beautiful baby boy. He could be. He could be back literally <laughs> and metaphorically in pog form in defense for the Giants. Uh, we'll see about that. I don't know. I, it's, I'll see how they want to run it around. They seem pretty adamant about playing him forward, and I've been hurt before, Patch. Yeah, 385k, I, I obviously wouldn't be picking him this week, but I don't know. He's had 89 and 100 in his last two weeks. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. If you ignore the 52, 40, 50, and 54 he did to start the season, they're good scores. He's averaging like 95 if you ignore the first four scores. <laughs> they are. They're good scores, Brent. All right. Um, if you ignore um, Ollie Florence last two games, he was averaging like a hundred. Are we? Are we just doing this now? <laughs> is this? If you ignore Max Gorn zero, he's okay. He is doing very well. If you ignore that, if you zero. ignore Mason Cox's entire career aside from that one preliminary <laughs> final, he's the best player to ever play the game. Nick Haynes at four forty eight k is very enticing. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's been putting together it was a really, really quiet, like nice portfolio the last couple of weeks. A portfolio, well, yeah, to request his trade to my team. <laughs> I think we've covered it all, gentlemen. <laughs> I think we've done it. I think we've absolutely uh, run out of gas on this one. <laughs> it's a lot of football. <laughs> I hate games... the dragged out weeks, man. And by the way, it's a disgrace. The AFL is a disgrace for naming Monday, Tuesday teams at Monday night at like six o'clock. That is a travesty. The team disgusting. they know who they're playing in their teams on the Thursday. They okay. know, Mr. President. There are too many days of football. Please eliminate three. I'm not a crackpot. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening. Make sure you head to jockriddles.com.au and there's be plenty of content this week. Make sure you send in your questions for next week's Jock Mailbag. We'll do a call out for that on Twitters and whatnot. There'll be a cheat sheet. There'll be da- uh, barons around the grounds. There will be the panic room. There'll be a bunch of stuff. So just keep tuned. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on, making this a wonderful time. Damo, have a good week. Lek Dog, have a good week yourself. Clarky, enjoy the uh, the big win from the Demons on the weekend. 
Thanks, man. I, I, I will. I live to cry another week. Don't say it. And Patch, I dare not don't say you... anything to you. Oh, it's nice that we don't play football on a public holiday, isn't God, it, Patch? By gum. I mean, it's still three-quarter time at time of recording, so I don't know why I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go watch the, the, the last quarter, which is about to start. All right. Enjoy, gentlemen. Bye. Go Bombers. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>